Hi, it's Warren Hewitt here. Hope you're doing marvellously well. Please, as ever, subscribe. Go to producelikeapro.com. You can sign up for the email list, get a whole bunch of free stuff. My drum samples, drum sessions to um, edit, sessions to mix, all kinds of fun stuff. And of course, if you like, please try out the 14-day free trial of the Academy. There's a lot of incredible people in there helping each other. I'm truly blessed and we're having a blast. Plus, we get uh, a new session every month to download and mix and I do a critique. Okay, so my very good friend, uh, Ben Wysocki, is the drummer of The Fray, and he was in town this week to record. And I was recording a song by an artist called Jessica Roadcap. Jessica is a wonderful artist from Nashville, an amazing singer-songwriter, and she just won the Blackbird Academy of Arts in Arkansas. Um, she just won their songwriting competition. So we got to record a song over the weekend. It was a lot of fun. So what I wanted to show you here was we're going to take Ben's drums and we're going to look at the relationship between, um, you know, the samples, the small drum kit that's recorded here. Um, there's some fun stuff like the snare we use, we've used on other songs with Ben. You can learn a little bit more about that in a second. But one of the things that's important to me is I get asked a lot about parallel drum compression. I do like to use it from time to time, but in this instance, I didn't do it on the whole bus, I just did it on a certain element of the drum kit. So let's check that out. Great, so Ben came by here uh, to Spitfire. He played the kit in there. The snare drum I have in there is a Ludwig Supraphonic. And I used that snare drum on How to Save a Life. That's the snare drum we used on the single. It's also the snare drum that's on pretty much every song, I think, except for one, possibly two, on the second Frey record. So it's like an old friend. He picked it up and looked at it and had a laugh when he saw it. We use it all the time. It's on a lot of the last Aerosmith record. The reason why I mention it is because it's probably the most used snare drum of all time, the Ludwig Superphonic. It's on more records than I can, I can care to think of. So many records from the 60s and the 70s. It's a wonderful snare drum. You can get them used on eBay pretty inexpensively and Ludwig still make them. So highly recommend it. I'm not sponsored by Ludwig, I just really like the, uh, the snare. Plus, you know, the, we have the 64 Ludwig in there. We have a combination of Peisty and Zildjian cymbals. Um, they're all mis mixed and matched. They're not really any particular one um, you know, style, they're just what sounds good in the room. The drum setup is really, really simple. We have a pair of 340 Lewicks over, on overheads, we have a Lewick kick drum mic, we have a Lewick 140 on the hi-hat. We do have C12As on toms, which is incredibly expensive, but they just happen to sound really, really good. And we have 57s top and bottom on the snare. It's a very, very simple drum setup. It goes through the Kadak with no EQ on it, just gives us fat tones. So let's listen to the actual drum sound as it is. So this is the live drums, obviously with some compression and EQ on it. So I've compressed it quite heavily. If you look at the kick here, if you look at the kick in here, there's not a lot going on. The snare does have a time adjuster, which is pushing it back 133 samples in time with the overheads. I think the most fun thing I've got going on um, is this sn side snare. The side snare is an RCA ribbon mic. If we have a listen to this on its own. Okay, so what I did that was interesting on this, if I take the compressor off for a second, you'll hear something. Here's the, without the compressor on. It's basically the kick as loud as the snare drum. Put the compressor on. Now the kick is coming out. So what I did is there's a kick sample up here. This kick sample is feeding the compressor. It's side chaining to bus one here. So what that, what that does is it compresses every time the kick plays. It's a great little trick, and it's a way to remove your kick drum from your snare. Now, obviously, if you're playing four on the floor, you know, you were doing this, this groove where the kick and the snare are playing together, that would be completely useless. But he wasn't. There is no time that he plays the snare at the same time as the kick. So that, that side snare mic, the RCA ribbon mic, might be picking up the kick as well as the snare, but it's not 
being amplified as much because the compressor is compressing every kick drum using the sidechain function here. So what we do is we set to bus one here, and then on the sample here, we're sending from bus one. And it's sent pre-fade, meaning whether, it doesn't matter whether this is um, soloed or not, or muted, it will always hear it. So we can do any adjustment we like. And most importantly, we can hear the snare on its own. So here's with the sidechain compression, without. Hear the kick. It's great. Also what I love about it is it, it does let a little bit of the kick go through, but just like a little bit of the attack. So it doesn't ruin the bottom end, it kind of gives us a little bit more attack on it. So that was nice. It's amazing with the way that that, um, with the way that River Mic works, that you barely hear any, any hi-hat bleed. It's crazy. Great, so I had some fun with it. So if we go back to the drums, the standard drum sound. All in all, pretty good drum sound. The other fun things we're doing is there's a parallel compressed snare bottom. So I've got this parallel compressor going on here. And what this parallel compressor is going on here, if you see the compression, it's pretty aggressive. Super fast release, just letting that attack go through. So we've got a snare top, snare bottom, and then of course, a side snare. So those three, you can do this, you could set up a separate auxiliary or you can multi mult your tracks. And what I've done there is I've multed my tracks to do this. So I've got duplications of my snare top, snare bottom and side snare, which is the RCA mic. So those three are going to my parallel compressor. Take the compression off. So look at that compression setting, what it's doing. Pretty generic, three snares together. Now. It's kind of adding a lot of energy to the track. It's a, it's a great 1176 um, trick. So attack, full left, release, full right. It was set to gain reduction, and it's being hit pretty hard, so it's on limit at 20 to 1. So we're letting the attack come through. There's a song, this started um, a few years ago, there was a, a song, um, Coming Home, which Caden Cashmere actually um, just um, cut recently. And this came from when I was working in my old studio, and I was just trying to add more attack to it. See, when I first started, you know, with Pro Tools, trans the transient designer was not, a, first of all, I don't think that even the hardware version was available, but there definitely was no way to do that transit designer trick using a plugin. So I would have to manufacture these kind of things myself. And as much as I love the transient designer, I still do things manually. So I take it off. Put it back on. And it comes from years of messing around with 1176s and knowing what to do. Great, so that's adding some energy to our track. Let's put it all back in, you'll hear it. Great, next up, we have three kick samples and three snare samples from Addictive. And this is what we get. Take them out. So basically, what I've got the generic samples I use there, um, but you can, the great thing about Addictive or any of those softwares, whether it be Steven Slates or Easy Drummer, is you can actually tune the snares. And I think it's important to tune the kick and the snares, particularly the snare to the snare of the track. So, without, drop it in. Take it out. 
So it's just kind of adding some nose to the track. So dropping in the bass is with and without. which is actually kind of a big part of the sound for me. The D28 is a snare sample that I've had for a long, long time. I use a lot. It's part of my sample package, so if you, if you haven't already, sign up on the email list and you'll get it. But this snare one... So there you can see, you know, how those few little elements are really helping the drum sound. One of the important things for me is when you've got a drummer like Ben, a lot of drummers that can do this, that do that grace note stuff, is capturing it. That was the reason for the RCA mic, was when we were first started tracking, I really felt like I wasn't picking up a lot of that. And then side chaining the compression from the kick, removing from the kicks from it, meant, um, it I, meant I was able to push that grace note stuff really well. For me, when you're using a small drum room like we have, it's all about just sort of getting the best for each of it. I could take those samples and push them louder, I could add some reverb to them. Remember the Andy Wallace trick is to take the snare sample only and use that to tr trigger the reverb so there's no bleed of hi-hat and stuff into it. So we are with the D28 using a little bit of the, the, the verb is being triggered a lot from that. Without. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please, as ever, leave a whole bunch of questions and comments below. It's a whole can of worms that you open up when it comes to recording drums. There's so much, so many different ways to record them and so many different ways to mix them. And the great thing is, even if you have a small room, like mine is very, very small, we can manipulate and make the drums sound bigger. The drum performance was not edited at all. We had Ben play live to a piano vocal and then we recut some stuff to him. I played bass to it. We kept it feeling natural. This is a track that has to breathe. Jessica's a, an organic, real artist but at the same time we had to have the drums be a little bit more slamming than just the four or five mics so there's a combination between the samples blended in with the live drums and then the parallel compression on the snare so I hope you enjoyed that please as ever leave a whole bunch of questions and comments below let us know how you do things and let's have a great discussion and thank you ever so much for watching and have a marvelous time recording and mixing